It's time to decode diplopia charting. So what is diplopia charting? Diplopia charting is basically a record of separation of diplopic images in nine position of the case. So basically it is not done routinely. However, it can be done in patients where we cannot do a HES chart or the other tests for binocular single vision like in those who are bedridden or handicapped. Now suppose a patient walks into your clinic. Now this patient is shown an object. And you notice that the patient actually sees the images as two. So this is called double vision. Now you carry out your diplopia charting and during the diplopia charting, you might see variable results. In one gaze or in one field of view, you might have two visions. Then in one position, you might have fused images. In some other positions, you might have vertically separation between the images. You might have horizontal separation or horizontal distance between the images. Or sometimes one of the image might look as tilted to one direction, right? So. Now, this is all based upon the principle of double vision. So what happens exactly is that once you look at an object, the image is projected onto the fovea of both the eyes. The fovea is considered to be the principal visual direction. And all the other points on the retina are known to have secondary visual directions. So we'll talk about the visual direction in detail when we talk about the binocular single vision. Now, apart from that, the fovea is also a retinomotor center or a retinomotor zero point. So what it means is that once an image of the object of regard is formed on the fovea, there is no incentive for the ocular movement. Now, now what happens in squint is that suppose the eyeball is inwardly rotated as shown over here in this picture. What happens is that the object is now falling on an extra foveal point and in this picture it is falling on the nasal aspect of the retina and therefore the image is not localized to the same point as that of the object and the image over here is being localized somewhat temporal to the object because the object is projected onto the nasal aspect aspect of the retina. So in this way, we can see that instead of having one single visual direction, which happens when the, then the object is falling on the fovea of both the eyes, because the fovea of the two eye are corresponding points, here what is happening is that we are getting two different visual directions, okay? And these two different visual directions will lead to the uh, development of diplopia or double vision. Now, out of these two images, the first image which is coming from the fovea of one eye is actually a true image and the other image which is formed from the extra foveal point is considered to be the false image. Now, since these two images are actually located or they are corresponding to the location of the eyeball. So if you see the right eye, the true image is present onto the right aspect of the two images. Whereas the false image, if you see, is present on the left aspect over here and the uh, extra foveal point and the eye containing the extra foveal point or the squinted eye is also present on the left side. Now, this type of diplopia is called an uncrossed diplopia, right? And this uncrossed diplopia is seen in case of esodeviation when the eyeball is deviated inwards. So, I hope that is clear. Now, on the other hand, what if the eyeball is actually deviated towards outside, which is called an exodeviation? Now, in that case, you can see here that the object is now falling on the temporal aspect of the retina. The extra foveal point is present on the temporal aspect of the retina. And therefore, the image is formed on the nasal aspect of the eye. And here, what is happening is that the true image and the false image have actually crossed each other and they are present on the opposite side of the eyeball location and therefore this is called a cross diplopia and cross diplopia is seen in cases of exo deviation so i hope that is clear now so what is the exact principle of diplopia charting? In diplopia type of testing or in diplopia charting, one is basically determining the subjective localization of a single object, which is pointing as an image on the fovea of one fixating eye and on the extra foveal point of the other eye.
So this is what you are going to see in diplopia charting. But the question over here is that all I'm seeing is these similar looking candles. But how do I tell that which image belongs to right eye and which one belongs to the left eye? So is there a solution? Yes, there is a solution. You could put a red filter in front of the right eye and a green filter in front of the green eye. What this does is that it will convert the images also into red and green images. So this way you are basically differentiating these two visual fields and you can actually now make this actually makes the identification of the true and false images much more easier. So now let us see how do you actually do diplopia charting. So step number one is that you make the patient wear red green goggles. Now these goggles are called the Armstrong goggles which must be very carefully fitted so that they are looked through in all the positions of gaze. So as I told you that you're going to carry out the diplopia charting in all nine positions of gazes. So make sure that that the lenses or the goggles are well fitted to the patient. Step number two is you give the patient a source of light. The patient will view a linear light source. You can use your retinoscope to create this linear source of light on a blackboard or a whiteboard or, or a simple wall also. And the distance between the patient and the wall is usually about 50 centimeters. And now you are going to question the patient about the relative position of the two images that the patient is going to see. Okay, now sometimes patient will actually give you in the complaint itself that he actually has these images which are vertically separated and not horizontally separated. Now, if you have such a coherent patient, it is better to use a source of light that is horizontal in orientation rather than using a vertical source of light. Now, after you have done that, the patient has to be questioned regarding whether the images are parallel to each other, whether the two images are tilted, is there any sort of torsion which is present, and whether the patient can actually demonstrate it to you. Right? To explain diplopia charting, as I told you that you are supposed to make the patient wear these Armstrong goggles or the red and green goggles in such a way that the red filter will be in front of the right eye and the green filter will be in front of the left eye. So that is your basic rule that you're supposed to follow. Red in front of right eye. Okay. And then the pa as the patient looks at the wall, you're going to actually stand behind the patient. So the view of the patient that you get is that of the second picture. Now, the patient will be asked regarding the results. Okay. So the patient can actually report seeing one single fused image in which the red, the red image which is coming from the right eye and the green image which is coming from the left eye will actually get fused together and will form a single fused image. Or the patient might actually see two images, okay, as shown over here, red from the right and green coming from the left eye. So remember that here we are seeing the patient from behind. So our right will be patient's right and our left will be patient's left. Now the patient might also say that these two images are actually separated from each other. So that is called a horizontal separation or there might be a vertical separation. That means the images are up and down. Sometimes the vertical separation can also be represented by using a by using a horizontal source of light. Sometimes the patient might actually tell you that there's actually tilting of the images. And sometimes you can also give them these pencils and ask them to actually draw the images on a piece of paper. So marking of the diplopia charting. A diplopia charting is marked in such a way that our right is patient's right and also the right side of the chart and the left side is marked like this. Also you are supposed to mark the distance at which the testing is done. And the usual distance that which the test is carried out is about 50 centimeters and sometimes the test can also be done at about one meters distance. What are some of the precautions to take while carrying out the diplopia charting? 
Make sure that the patient's head is kept straight throughout the test. The distance of the lights must remain constant and it, it must always be kept upright. Okay, you should not be tilting your light. Obviously, if you tilt your light or if the patient tilts his head, obviously the images will also be tilted. Once the diplopia has been analyzed in the primary position, make sure that you check all the nine position of the gazes in turn. Coming to the most important part of diplopia charting, that is the interpretation of diplopia charting. So this we shall be discussing in step manner. So step one is first of all knowing which image belongs to which eye. Obviously we know that the red image belongs to the right eye and the green image belongs to the left eye. You should also know whether the images are crossed and uncrossed and that you are going to tell based on whether they are corresponding to the eye or not. Over here we know that our right is the right side of the screen and our left is the left side of the screen which are marked over here and you can see that this is the patient, this is our patient who is carrying out the test. He's wearing his red green goggles with red in front of the right eye and green in front of the left eye. The image is also the red one is present on the right side and the green one is present on the left side and this is corresponding to the glasses that the patient is wearing and therefore this type of diplopia is called an uncrossed diplopia. Now what if the red image goes on to the left side and the green image comes to the right side. Now this will not correspond to the filter that the patient is wearing and therefore this is called a crossed diplopia seen in case of exodeviations. Coming to step 2. Step 2 is you have to note the quadrant or the gaze position in which there is maximum separation of the images. Now this maximum separation could be horizontal separation or vertical separation but note down in which gaze position this is maximum. So do recollect your nine position of the gazes and then in step three you actually have to remember your yoke muscle groups which are acting in each gaze position. So that is very very important. Step 3 is you have to write down those yoke muscles which are corresponding to the gaze position in which the maximum separation of the images occur. Basically, the images will be maximally separated in the direction of action of the paralyzed muscle. So once you know where the images are maximally separated, you also find out the yoke muscles which will be acting in that gaze position. And now you have to actually find out among those yoke muscles which is the one which is actually the culprit. So let us take an example. Over here you can see that the patient here has more separation on to the right side of the chart and you can see that the red is present on the right side and the green is present on the left side. So this is an uncrossed diplopia. The separation is more on the right gaze position and we know that in this right gaze position the muscles which are going to be acting here what are those? Those are the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus. Now, the question is, out of these two yoke muscles, is it the right LR palsy or is it the left MR palsy? How do we know? So for that, we go ahead and analyze further. Now, if it was a right lateral rectus palsy, what will happen? The patient will actually have esotropia. And as I told you and I explained to you in the beginning of the video, esotropia will cause uncrossed diplopia. And in case of left MR palsy, you will have exotropia or an outward deviation. And an exotropia will cause a cross diplopia. Now in this case, what did the patient have? Patient has an uncrossed diplopia because the red is present on the right side. That means the patient has esotropia and we are dealing with the right lateral rectus palsy. So this is one way of knowing out of the yoke muscles which muscle is actually the culprit. Now, if the crossed and uncrossed uh, finding, you know, it confuses you, you can actually check out the next step. The next step is a step four. Here, you can actually observe the outermost image and you can find out to which eye that outermost image belongs to. Now, over here, the outermost image is actually this red color image. So, definitely this red color image will belong to which eye? It will belong to the right eye. And therefore, here also you should know that the image which is present on the outer side is also the false image and it indirectly tells you that the false image actually comes from the deviated eye and therefore that is the culprit eye. 
right so the question was is it right lateral rectus palsy or is it left mr palsy because these two were the yoke muscles now you know that here the outer image is that from the right eye and therefore the culprit here is the right eye and we are dealing with right lateral rectus palsy So what we can learn from this, basically diplopia is maximum or the separation of the images is maximum in the field of action of the paralyzed muscle. The false image, that is the image which belongs to the eye with the hyperfunctioning muscle is always peripherally situated. Now let us take some of the examples to understand diplopia charting in detail. This is our first example. You should know this is the right side and this is the left side of the chart. So what can you see here? The right is present on the right side. The green, the red is present on the right side. The green color image is present on the left side. So therefore, we're dealing with uncrossed diplopia. Where is the maximum separation of the images present? It is present in the left gaze. Now, in the left gaze, exactly, it is present in the levo elevation, in the levo version, and also in the levo depression. Next is finding out the muscles which are acting in those image positions, right? Or in those gaze positions. So the muscles in the levo elevation are the left superior rectus and the right inferior oblique. In levo version, it is the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus. In the levo depression, it is left inferior rectus and the right superior oblique. So is there any vertical separation over here? The answer is no. So now this will eliminate all your uh, superior rectus, inferior rectus, superior oblique and the inferior oblique because they are associated with the vertical movements. With the horizontal movements, we have only two muscles that is the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus in this levo version. Next, we go ahead and find out out of these two muscles, that is the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus, which one is the culprit. Here, what kind of diplopia we have? We have an uncrossed diplopia. Okay. And which eye image is the most peripheral here? The image is that of the left eye. So, which muscle is going to be involved over here out of the left lateral rectus and the right medial rectus? The answer is the left lateral rectus and therefore we are dealing with the left lateral rectus palsy. Moreover, you have an uncrossed diplopia. Uncrossed diplopia means the abductor is defected. That means there is an inward deviation or an esodeviation. So there is isotropia, this uncrossed diplopia and there is maximum separation in the left gaze and the most peripheral image is that of the left eye. Now let us take another example, example number two. Before we understand and go ahead with the example number two, we should understand the concept of the tilting of images and why do we see this tilting on the diplopia charting. Now, suppose this is the patient who's sitting in front of you. Uh, we wish we could actually see through his head, his eyes and how his eyes are actually turned, but we can't. So what we'll do is, will actually make this image transparent and act as if we can look through his head, his eyes from behind. Now, if the patient eyes were straight, we will see the red lines like this. Okay. And if there's any sort of movement, I will be changing these lines. So initially, the, the patient is actually looking straight. That means there's no squint. So the images or what I mean to say, there's no torsion in the eye. So the images will be actually straight like this. However, if this right eye undergoes intorsion, which is the inward, move, inward rotation of the eyeball, then that is called intorsion. The image will actually get rotated in this way as shown over here. Similarly, if the eyeball rotates outward, which is called extorsion, you will have a corresponding tilt to the image as shown in the picture. Similarly, in the left eye represented here by the green bar, you can see if the eye is not dotted in any direction, you will see a left image which is straight. If the eye is moving inward, which is called intorsion, rotating inwards, what will happen? You will have the image as shown over here. If the eye is excycloducted or extorted, the image will also rotate in the opposite direction. Right. So now you consider this example. This is our example number two. So let us now decipher this second example. So here, the first question that we always ask is whether there is cross diplopia or uncross diplopia. 
here the red image is present on the right side and the green image is present on the left side therefore we are dealing with an uncrossed diplopia next question is where is the maximum separation the maximum separation is present in the down gaze now these positions are the direct depression the dextro depression and the levo depression what are the group of muscles which are going to act in these position so in dextro depression you have the right inferior rectus and the left superior oblique in the direct depression we have the inferior rectus in levo depression we have the left inferior rectus and the right superior oblique if you do not understand these i would advise you go to my video on the extraocular muscle anatomy now the next question the next thing is that which eye image is the most peripheral over here you can see that the red image is the most peripheral and periphery means that it is most downwards right so therefore the problem is present in the right eye so we are going to eliminate all the muscle groups which are present in the left eye so we will strike off all the left inferior rectus and the left superior oblique so now we are left with inferior rectus and superior oblique so the question is are we dealing with right eye superior oblique palsy or right eye inferior rectus palsy so here we are left with two group of muscles in the same eye in the right eye so how do you deal with such a situation here the answer is very simple you have uncrossed diplopia okay and you have right eye problem now whenever you have uncrossed diplopia it means that the eye is inwardly deviated or eso deviated that means the ab ductors of the eye are paralyzed the question that i would like to ask you is that are obliques ab ductors or recti ab ductors for that you should know the secondary and tertiary actions of the muscle so obliques basically are the abductors and the recti are adductors okay so it's because in uncrossed diplopia your abductors are paralyzed that means the muscle which is affected in this condition is the right superior oblique muscle now let us now understand and observe the tilt which is present in this diplopia charting so this is going one step further so observe the image here the image is bent towards which side the image is bent towards the left side okay the red image is bent towards the left side of the chart now that means that the eye must be present in the opposite direction the eye must be tilted towards the opposite direction so if you remember your uh, diagram of a transparent man or a man with a transparent head in which you were able to uh, look through his head into his right eye his right eye would actually be extorted that means you have here extortion and that extortion is actually seen in superior oblique palsies because the superior oblique is an intorter and obviously one superior oblique gets paralyzed you will have extortion and therefore you will see that tilting in the image now let us go ahead with the third example have a look at this image now what do you see over here you can see that the red image is present on the left side whereas the green image which should normally be present on the left side is present on the right side of the chart so what type of diplopia are we seeing we are seeing cross diplopia the next question is where is the maximum separation present the maximum separation is present in the up gaze now what do you have to do you have to find out the muscles which are going to be acting in that up gaze so in your levo elevation you have left superior rectus and the right inferior oblique in elevation you have superior rectus in dextro elevation you have right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique next which one is basically the most peripheral image that means the most upward image is that of the right eye over here because the red image is present right now since the right eye is affected what we are going to do we are going to eliminate all the muscles which are present in the left eye in this chart so we are going to eliminate the left superior rectus we are going to eliminate the left inferior oblique so what are we going to left with we are left with the right inferior oblique and the right superior rectus now the question is are we dealing with the right eye superior rectus palsy or we are dealing with right eye inferior oblique palsy how do we find out simple here we are dealing with cross diplopia cross diplopia is seen in case of exo deviation 
exo deviation is outward deviation of the eyeball that means the adductors are paralyzed and what are the adductors out of the recti and oblique the recti are the adductors and therefore we are dealing with the right eye rectus palsy in this case it is the superior rectus palsy now let us correlate the tilt in this diplopia charting here the image is again bent to the left side you can see the tilt is present towards the left side so what does it mean if the image is bent towards this way the eye must be bent in the opposite direction the eye must be tilted in the opposite direction that means you have this extortion so here also you have extortion because you are dealing with superior rectus palsy so basically as a basic rule remember that superiors whether it is superior rectus or superior obliques they are causing intortion so whenever they get paralyzed you will have extortion and the tilt of the image will be present towards the normal side that is the sound side so in this image you saw that the tilt was basically present towards the left side and the eye which was affected the right eye right so the tilt was present towards the normal side or the left side inferiors basically cause extortion and their paralysis will lead to intortion and the tilt of the image will be present towards the same side or the affected side so if the right eye is affected the tilt will be present towards the right eye if the left eye is affected the tilt will be present towards the left eye let us take an advanced example which is example number 4 so observe this diplopia chart over here so what do you see do you see a cross diplopia yes the red image is present on the left and the green image is present on the right side now if you carefully observe you can see that the separation is present in almost all the gazes except in the right one position right so in the up gaze the red is peripheral in the left gaze also there is separation and also in the down gaze there is horizontal separation along with some tilts but if you would observe carefully there is fused image which is present in only one single quadrant which is called the dextroversion right so that means that probably in only one gaze position the eye muscle group is working and in the remaining position the muscles are actually affected in the dextroversion so we will go retrograde and we'll try to figure out which muscle group is normal over here so in the right position basically which is the muscle which will be normal it is the right lateral rectus and the left medial rectus so there's fused image present only in the dextroversion now which eye is affected over here that will be answered by the question that is which eye image is peripheral everywhere if you see in the up gaze the red is uh, red is at a higher level in the left gaze the red image is more uh, more on the left side in the down gaze the red, the red image is more towards the down side and therefore the image which is more peripheral is the red image that is from the right eye and therefore the right eye is affected so which muscle groups are affected here so in the right eye definitely you know that the the muscle which is present in this quadrant will definitely be normal that is the right lateral rectus is definitely normal and left medial rectus we have already excluded because we know that the left eye is not affected it is the right eye which is affected so here you know that the inferior rectus can get involved the superior rectus the medial rectus and the obliques of the right eye can also be involved over here now the question is which one is actually involved so here do you see cross to run cross we see cross diplopia so whenever this cross diplopia it is the adductors which are paralyzed and we know that the recti are adductors that means the pathology over here is that of the recti basically and not of the obliques right so what we are going to do we are going to eliminate these obliques also from the equation for now right so here we have cross diplopia and we see that the right eye recti are involved except the lateral rectus so what is this condition where you have superior rectus palsy medial rectus palsy inferior rectus palsy and your superior oblique is preserved your lateral rectus is preserved because they are supplied by the fourth and the sixth nerve so which is this condition this is actually your third nerve palsy because third nerve actually supplies your superior rectus medial rectus inferior rectus and also inferior oblique 
so this is a this is actually a diplopia charting of third nerve palsy now i want you to observe this very carefully and answer this what do you think about this what do you think about the tilt in this example what kind of tilt is seen over here and why do you see this tilt so i hope you like this video thank you and have a nice day Thank you.